to Mark, Mark chapter 13. And I'll just read from verse, from verse 14. But when you shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let, let, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. And let him that is in the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, and them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in winter, for in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of creation, which God created until this time, and neither shall be. And except the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he shortened the days. And if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is here, believe him not. False Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders so to, to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. We'll just have a couple of intimations, as we heard this morning from my brother John. On oh Lord, we just thank you again for your goodness. We thank you, Lord God, for all oh Lord the liberty that we have. We thank you, Lord God, for your love towards us. Oh, Lord God, we just pray that you would bless every faithful child of God, oh, Lord, in this the Lord's Day. Lord, we think of all over this country, oh, Lord God, your people have gathered in Lord's Day. And, oh, Lord God, we know that for some it's still difficult to get to the house of God. We know there's still, oh, Lord God, restrictions and different things. But we thank you, Lord God, for everybody who's been able to gather to hear the word this morning and today and this evening. We just pray you will bless them. Bless, O oh Lord, all over this country. O oh Lord God, we think all over the world as your people have gathered. O oh Lord God, whether they've been able to physically gather together or they've gathered together on, online. O oh Lord God, we just pray that all this praise and worship would ascend to your glory this day. We thank you that you've given us this day. And we just pray, O oh Lord God, that you'd bless us. We just pray, O oh Lord God, you'll bless those who have the rule over us. O oh Lord God, you'll give them wisdom in all the decisions that they have to make. And O oh Lord God, we just thank you that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we just come to worship you this evening. Amen. Well, continuing in, in our studies in the book of Mark, um, still in Mark chapter 13, and we've come to these verses in verse 21. We'll look at 21 to 23. Um, and if any man shall say unto you, Lo, he is Christ, or lo, he is here, believe him not, for false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. This is the second time in this chapter that Jesus warns of false Christs coming on the scene. And we see, we see it right at the start of the chapter, um, in verse 5, sorry, in verse, verse 5, and Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You know, when we came to these verses 21, I thought, well, I've kind of mentioned this the last time I was speaking. But obviously, as the Lord mentions it twice, I felt then we still, we'll still look at it again, again this evening. And hopefully we'll see something maybe a little bit, a bit different. But in, in these first verses, in the first mention of this, Jesus is obviously saying that there will be people who will proclaim to be the Christ but the difference in verse 21 is others who are coming to tell, here's, we have found the Christ. And as we see here, they, they talk about signs and wonders. And we see that again, Jesus gives the warning that we need to be very careful. That even as the elect, we are not taken in by, by all of these things. And we see the excitement in verse 21. Look, here is Christ. Look, he's here. A tremendous excitement as people think they've found, they've found the Messiah, as they think they've found the one that, that, that's been told of in the word of God. And, and as, as the, verse goes on to, the verses go on to say that there'll be false prophets and there'll be signs and wonders that will follow all of, all of this. And it'll be quite an exciting time. And as our brother Jack mentioned last Sunday morning, there are many people who are caught up by excitement, caught up by experiences, 
and and look for these things and and that's the motivate that's a big motivator for them it's not is this the will of god for my life it's like is this exciting they hear of signs and wonders and they and they want to go after these things now of course there's nothing there's nothing there's obviously nothing wrong with signs and wonders there's nothing wrong with excitement and and experiences because at the end of the day that's what we all we all want to experience God's power and God's and more of God and, and it to be a Christian life, as we heard from our brother John this morning, should be exciting. We should be excited to be Christians. We should be excited to gather together to worship the Lord, to come to the word of God. You know, it should be exciting when we think, as John said this morning, of how we've been saved, of how God has loved us and the plan that he has for us. That is that is exciting. And there are many wonderful experiences that we can testify of. We have seen many signs and wonders ourselves. Some can testify of, of amazing healings, of amazing supernatural experiences that they've had. And these are all very exciting and, 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 and they're for the children of God. But we see that for some, that's all that they really want. As Jack said, we see people who, who will be around different churches for, to, to be somewhere new, to see something new, to have a different experience, to be entertained, in fact, Many just like the, the fact of, of being entertained and we see that in many places there is, there's great productions and, and the worship, great productions in the service, tremendous lighting. And again there's, again, there's nothing particularly wrong with these things as long as the word of God has been faithfully preached. But for some people, that's, that's the big motivator. That's the big draw to be somewhere where, it's, where it seems to be exciting. And, you know, as our, our brother Jack says, we need to be on our guard especially even in, in Zion for people who, who come in, who come in with, who claim to have gifts, who claim to, to have this and to have that. We need to be very much, very much mindful of all of these things. We've, we've seen that in the past. People come in, you know, when, I, when the tingling's in my hands, that's when the healing starts. And the pastor's like, that's when you leave. <laughs> so we need to be, we need to be very much in our guard to, to these type of things. But at the end of the day, everybody, everybody wants excitement. Everybody wants Everybody wants ex experiences and inter even entertainment in the world. You know, you don't go along to an event hoping that it will be tremendously disappointing and that nothing, nothing will happen and you go home disappointed. Whatever, even in the world, people go along because they want excitement. They want it to be entertaining. They want to have experienced, say, what a wonderful experience that, whatever it was. And as, as the children of God, as I said, the Christian life is exciting. There is tremendous excitement in knowing the love of God and the power of God. There's tremendous excitement as you testify for God and you get an opportunity to witness to someone. You know that excitement that you just see that God has opened a door for you to, to witness to this person. Tremendous excitement when you, you read the word of God and you see God speaking directly to you, directly to your situation. That's an, excite, an exciting time and there are many wonderful experiences in being a child of God. But the, the problem is that, there is, as I say, there's some where that's all that they, they're really looking for. They're not looking for a deeper walk with God. They're not looking to be committed to the things of God. They're certainly not looking to be challenged by the word of God. They just want, they just want this, this entertainment. And we see that while the Christian life is a life of excitement and experiences, it's not always just that. Because as we've seen in Mark chapter 13, there's more to the Christian life than just that. Because Jesus would, in this chapter, would warn his disciples. And that warning would be to us today that there would be wars and rumours of wars. There would be earthquakes and famines. These would be the beginning of sorrows. You know, God's people would be delivered up to councils. They would be beaten. They would be betrayed by their families. They'd be put in prison. And they would be killed. Now, none of that's... None of that's what anybody's looking for. Nobody's excited about the prospect of these things. The experiences, they certainly would be, but not the type of experiences that most people would be, would be longing for. And so Jesus shows us that while there is tremendous excitement in the Christian church, there is also a requirement to be able to dig in at times. There's also a requirement to, to be the type of Christian who will go through the difficult times because, as Jesus says, there will be difficult times. There will be trials and there will be problems and we will face difficulties. And in those times, God looks for a people who are able to go on and to keep on going. And I'm going to just 
Um, the title of this message is Exciting Stones. The stones are something that, in the word of God, speaks of something that is lasting, something that goes on. You know, it's not man-made. It's something that, you know, as we see in the word of God, the foolish man built his house upon the sand because it was easy. You know, the wise man built his house upon the rock because the rock, the stone, is something that is dependable, something that you can count on, that no matter, no matter the circumstances, it will continue. And sometimes when you think about a stone, it doesn't seem particularly exciting, unless perhaps that stone's a diamond. But other than that, stones don't seem to be that exciting. But that's the type of people that God is looking for, a people that he can build with, a people who will be here today and still be here in 10 years' time, a people that he can count upon, dependable, faithful to the things of God, that in the storm, they will stand in the storm, They'll fight on, they won't surrender, they won't give up when things get hard. And unfortunately, for many of those who are only caught up with experiences and excitement and entertainment, when trials and difficulties come, then they're out. They move on to the next place because it's too hard. It's too hard. They're looking for it. They're looking, they don't see the experiences any longer. They just see there's a fight to be had and they're not quite, they're not quite ready for that. And you know, there's always an excitement when you go to a new church and we see that for some of these people, there have been around dozens of churches. You know, for many of us, we'll have been to maybe one or two or three churches seeking the will of God. But for these people, dozens of churches, and I don't just mean they visit them the way you might visit on holiday, they're in them for a while until, until it becomes difficult, until the problems come and then they're like, oh, I'm fed up with this, until they don't feel the wind from the angel's wings, and then they're like, oh, this is too hard for me. I'll, go, I'll try somewhere else. You know, for some, they just give up the Christian life altogether because they find it too hard. They find all of these things that Jesus speaks about in Mark chapter 13, the problems and the trials and the difficulties, too much, too much. They never signed up for this. They signed up for excitement. They signed up to be entertained. They never signed up to fight. They never signed up to pray through and they've certainly not got the commitment to, to hold on to the things of God in these things. So I'm going to just take a very quick acrostic on, on the word stone. And we'll see for the S, the ability, for the T, testimony, the O is for obey, the N is for no, and the E is for endurance. And as we come to this first point, the S for stability. You know, in our Christian lives, there are many highs and many lows. There are mountaintops and there are valleys. You know, the, the stone, the Christian who has got it, the root of the matter truly in them, will manage to navigate through all of these experiences. You know, we've seen in the church over many years in Zion, we've seen the people who have stood in the seat punching the air in the prayer meeting, telling everybody, you need to get what I've got. You need to get this. God, why do these people... Why do these people, why, are they not, why do we not have what I have? Why are they not rejoicing? And everybody else is sitting there thinking, well, you should know because last month we never saw you in the house of God. But now you're back, you're full of jumping and you're full of excitement. And for, for many of these Christians, that's it. When they're up, they are up. But when they're down, they are out, pretty much out of the game. You know, as a pastor used to say, very much like a firework, a big display, a loud bang, and then nothing. And we've seen that so often over the years. People who who have been who seem to be greatly blessed, who seem to have great experiences, but it never really lasts. They're, there's a big shout. There's a, there's a big oh when they're up, they're they're in the meeting all the time, and then then they just disappear. They just they just fizzle out. They fade away. And we see God is looking for a people who can who can who want the blessing, who, who have been blessed, but also are dependable, who won't just be up one meeting and down the next, won't just be praying in the meeting, one meeting, then missing the next three meetings. God needs a people who he can count upon. You know, a people who, who, who he can bless, but don't let the blessings go to their head. A people who, who are blessed by God and who have experiences of God, but then don't become puffed up with those experiences, don't become caught up with the experience because... You know, we've seen that before. We were talking about this last night in our, our family time, uh, back in the times when there was a laying on of hands. And, you know, it was a wonderful experience. It was a wonderful time. But 
again, perhaps we could all testify. To, well, I certainly could have been excited by the laying on of hands. People all queuing up for the laying on of hands. But what did we build upon these things? Did we build upon this? Did we really build upon the ministry the way that we could have and we should have? And God looks for a people who will build, a people who will have a, a well of their own, who don't just need to constantly be lifted up at every meeting because they've, they've, they've been blessed while they're there, but they lose it by the next meeting. God needs a people who can, who can take the word in, build upon that word and come up ready to receive what God has for them and, and to continue to grow in their Christian life. Because we see that there will be storms, there will be, there will be valleys, and God needs a people who can, who can go through the storm. When others are, are saying, we're going to stop, we're going to just going to throw up, put our anchor down here because it's too hard, God looks for a people who can still sail on. A people who, when they find themselves in the valley, are prepared to go on their hands and knees and climb back up from the valley to continue to serve God. That's what God looks for. And we see in the word of God, We see in the word of God at times many of God's people who face great trials. Just a few weeks ago, we looked at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And as they faced, they faced the trial of being thrown into the fiery furnace. You know, we see with these three in their statement, our God is able, but if not, you know, even although they had no promise from God, they were willing to stand for God. They were willing to stand for God, even if that meant death in the furnace. And, you know, we see that's what God is looking for in, in each one of our lives, being prepared to trust God even when we don't understand why the things are happening, to trust God even when we look at the situations and we see God hasn't promised us anything in this situation, but we still feel that we can stand for him, we can trust him in this and go forward for him. And as we see, that's that's what, the Lord, that's what the Lord looks for. Christians who are stable, Christians who will be here through the good times and through the bad times who can, can go on for God. And we see that, we have that in abundance in Zion. As I look on this, I look on Zoom tonight, I see people who've been in Zion for you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, faithful to God. I've seen times of, of tremendous blessing of local revival. But I've also seen real difficult times, I've seen real problems, I've seen difficulties, yet they have been faithful to God and they've kept faithful to God. And we see that that's what the Lord looks for. The Lord needs those type of saints who will be faithful. And those are the people that God can, can build with. And that brings us to, to the, the T, which is for testimony. And again, everybody, everybody has a testimony. You know, but that doesn't mean that everybody's testimony is, is the same. You know, because there's a, there's a massive dis a massive difference in the testimony of those who are up and down and those who are faithful. Um, and as we see here, those who are caught up with, look, we've found a Christ, look, we've found this blessing, look, this is happening here, look, this is happening there, who are drawn just to the, the signs and the wonders. You know, that's, they have a testimony of somebody who, is, who isn't really stable in their Christian life. You know, they're caught up by, by these things, but they never really take any root in their life. We've, we've seen people over the years that have been in and out of Zion who have, you know, when you speak to them in one church, the next time you speak to them, they've left that church and they've moved on, and they're maybe on the fourth church since the last time they spoke, always mo moving on, always trying to, you know, having to join different things. When they get to a church, they become, they become very much involved and they join different things within that church. But then, and it's the best church they've ever been to, and you'll get, oh, it's like the pastor's ministry, it's like the pastor's ministry. And then the next time you speak, how's, how's that church going? Oh, I've left that church. I'm in, I'm in this other place now. And, and they don't really seem to know where they're meant to be. They just know that they're, they're always looking for something else and always moving on. And that becomes, that becomes a test. Nobody can, they're never dependable, they're never there to be used by God. You know, and that's what God looks for, for a people who are faithful people who are dependable, or people who, who are involved in the work of God, who get involved and who stay involved, even when it's hard, even when it's difficult. And it's a tremendous shame because many of these people have real talents for God. You know, some are, are musically very talented for God. Some of them, when they're up, have amazing testimonies. You know, so, so good at witnessing to people, so good at bringing people along. Yet, 
that that becomes part of their testimony. Sometimes they're up, and then sometimes they're just they're just out. They're just out of the game, and we see that God looks for a people because our testimonies, <coughs> excuse me, our testimonies are so important. And and what we want to have is a testimony of people who are faithful to God, people who are dependable for God. You know, as I've said many times, and as we know, we might be the only people that some people meet who are Christians. You know, there may be people that you meet and you're the only Christian that they know and you you become the barometer for what a Christian is and what God is like and what, what, what a Christian should be. And that's why it's so important that we are good examples for the Lord, that we're faithful to God, that they can look at your life and they can see your life in the hard times. They know you've been through difficulties, yet they still see you faithful to God. They can see you in times of great blessing and they see that you, you, you're excited by the things of God. And that's the importance of having a testimony, of having a walk before God. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't, you know, if, if we've failed the Lord and if we feel we've let the Lord down, if we feel right now that we are down, well, that's us, we've, we're, we're out of the game, we've, we've failed. No, obviously there's, a way, there's always a way back to God, there's always a way back. And, and if you feel that perhaps you haven't been as committed or as stable in your Christian life as you should be, there's always a fresh chance to, to put it together, to get it together, to through prayer and through through seeking God's word, to get that and to start that. Even if, if even if you feel that you may have you may have fallen in the past, there's a way forward. And we've seen people who in who in their, by their own testimony have, have have backslid, but now we see a life that has been lived for God, a life that has changed, and they can go forward and have the experience of being stable for God, to be faithful for God, so that we see that no matter where we may find ourselves, perhaps you might think to yourself, well, I'm, I'm not what I should be. I'm, I've, been, I've been out and I've been down. There's always a way back, like the prodigal. The prodigal looked and thought, there's no way back for me. There's no way that I can go back to being a son and being faithful and, and all of these things. But we see that when he returned, there was a welcome from the Father, and he would go on, and be that son and live that life and be faithful. And, th and through his experiences, these experiences would strengthen his faith. So we see it tonight that no matter where we may have been, there's always a way forward. And for those who have been faithful, we see the importance of remaining faithful because the world is watching. The world watches you. The world watches the things that you see. The world sees you in different times in your life and they see the reality not just of what you say you believe, but what you actually believe when in these trials, in these difficulties, which are many at times that you're still faithful to God and you're still going on for God. And that brings us to the O in the cross. The O is for obey. You will see that the child of God, the child of God, who's faithful to God will obey God's word, will obey God's commandments. You know, they're, they're, for them, it's, it's, it's more than just being hearers of the word. You know, they seek to be doers of the word. Whereas those who, who go after the experiences and the excitement hear the word, but while the word excites them, while the word is, 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 is blessing them, the word's great. But when the word, the word challenges them, when the word at times corrects them then they're thinking I don't need this I don't need to I, there's, I can go somewhere else but I don't need to I don't need to put up with that and you know, we see that God's people while at times God's word can be difficult for us we see that what God looks for is a people that are willing to obey you know when God came to Moses and told Moses that he was to go back to Egypt Moses was was unsure but we see that Moses obeyed God even although he had reservations that he wasn't the person to go back that he wasn't the man you know, he saw that God was saying, you are the one. You are the one to take this message. You are the one to lead the people. And he went. And we see that in our own Christian life, there will be times when God comes to us for things that we have to do. And we need to be able and ready to obey God's word. We need to be faithful to God's word. We need to be able to say, this is what God has called us for. And it might be difficult. It might be something that we feel we're not able for. But God has called us and we need to be faithful. We need to be faithful to that. And, and we even see that in, in the circumstances that we find ourselves in today. You know, we look at the, 
the lockdown restrictions that have been on us and that, that very possibly could come on us again. And these things are, are always very, very difficult, very difficult. And, and many of God's people find themselves asking different questions about has the, has the state overstepped its mark with the restrictions that it's placed upon us? And that is a big, it's a big question. And a lot of churches, especially in America right now, a lot of churches are wrestling with that question. Should they go into a second lockdown? Should they accept the restrictions that are placed upon them? And again, what we hear a lot of is, is this an Acts chapter 5 situation where we must obey God rather than man? A situation that is, that is worthy of civil disobedience. And it is a very difficult thing, very difficult for for God's people, but we see that there is a responsibility um, to to be subject at, at times to to the higher powers. We see in Romans chapter thirteen, uh, Romans thirteen and one, for instance, we see that God's uh, that Paul writes, "Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but God, and the powers that are ordained, the powers that are are ordained of God. Whosoever resisted the power resisted resisted the ordinance of God." And he that resisted shall receive to himself damnation. And we see in these things, Paul is telling us that at times we have to, we have to obey the, the, the people that have been put in power over us. And in this situation, these were not godly, godly um, judges. These were, these were pagans. These were not sympathetic to the Christian church at all. Yet Paul says God commands us to be, to respect them and to follow them. And we see that Again, in Titus chapter 3 and 1, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey the magistrates. And again, in 1 Peter chapter 2, 13 to 17, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. So we see that there are, there are certainly situations where we have to, God commands us to obey those who have the rule over us. So the question, the question that we face is this, is, is this a persecution on us? Is this an infringement on us? Now, these are certainly difficult times. These are definitely difficult times for us. And we look to our leaders and we know that the leaders that we have, the First Minister, the Prime Minister, they're not, they're not godly people. They're not people who seek the things of God. Yet we see the Word of God tells us they are ordained by God and we have a responsibility to respect them where we can. And as long as they don't infringe on the things of God, then we must, we must follow those things. And at times, some of the the things that come are, are difficult for us. Um, without getting into all where the virus came from and, and is the virus here and how bad the virus really is, because there's many different there's many different things upon that. You know, you watch one thing and you think, oh, that's really bad. And then you watch another thing and you think, I don't know if this is as bad as it's made out to be. And I guess we've all got opinions on that and we've all got different opinions on that. But one thing we, we see that we've got a responsibility to, to obey the things that, that we're asked to do. And you know, certainly on the on the on the subject is are is the Christian church being persecuted? Well, you know, are we being discriminated against? Well we see that this is this is this is worldwide and it's certainly within our country, you know, everybody's in the same situation. Everybody's been been given the same sort of, of restrictions at times. Everything's shut down at the same time and you know, even even with the singing, we've got to consider with these things. We know at the moment we're not singing, and I know that that can be that is definitely difficult um, for any of us who've been back in the church. It is particularly difficult. Um, but I suppose we must consider: is the information that we are being given correct? Is the information the best that the the government have at the time? Um, and we must ask ourselves: yes, perhaps it is. Um, you know, we may get further down the line and look and find out that it was they over they were over they were over cautious with these things and it wasn't just as bad. But we may get further down the line and find out it was exactly as bad as they feared. So we see that unless we're hundred percent sure in these things, then we must we see that we've got a, a responsibility, we've got a responsibility to hold on to these things. And I know it's very difficult. I know it's very difficult, and I know there's many churches, prominent churches, um feel have different views on, on all of these things. Um, and I know that there can be different, perhaps even within Zion, different views on these things, but we see that you know, we have a, a responsibility to the word of God also to, to obey these things. Unless we can 100% say, this isn't a thing, this isn't affecting, this won't affect us, this won't 
have an impact upon us, then I think that we've, we've got to take what we, what the information that we have at the moment. Um, I don't think we can even say, well, God will protect us. You know, it might be real, but we'll be protected. It won't happen to us while we're in the church because when we look to the word of God, you know, if somebody had leprosy, which was contagious, they weren't allowed just to come and worship and go, oh, listen, don't worry, everybody will be okay. This person's got leprosy, but God will protect us as we come to worship them. You know, that person was told that they had to stay away until they were clean of the leprosy, come back to the priest, and when, when they were found to be clean, then they could return to worship. So we see that even in the word of God, there was times when people couldn't come to worship together because of certain restrictions that, and illnesses that they had. And as I say, these are very difficult times, very difficult times, very difficult decisions, I'm sure, for our leaders, very difficult decisions to be made um, and not easy. And it's also the same for, for churches, very, very difficult decisions to be made. And, you know, we do know that people have, have died from it. A brother Gary works in a situation where he sees um, the effects of, of this on a daily basis. So there's, there are definitely real problems with it. Whether these are as wide ranging as has come through the media, that's that's to be that we'll, we'll find that out probably in due course. Um, but we do know that, that God's people have died from it. I know there's a few ministers in, in Northern Ireland who have died from it. And, and many people are dying from it. So there is, there is certain danger. So we know that, we know that perhaps, perhaps we're being too cautious, but perhaps not. Perhaps we'll look back and find out we've done, we have done exactly the right thing at this time. You know, we know that God's command is that we should love our neighbours as ourselves and we should care for, for each other. And, you know, it would be a terrible thing if, if through perhaps saying we don't need any of these restrictions, we don't need to, they take heed of these things and then through that somebody in a church was to become infected with, a, with the virus and, and, and to die through it. And that would be, you know, again, we may look back and think it was never, we may find out in, in, the, in the time to come, it was never as bad, it was never as contagious as, as first was thought. But again, is that a chance that we're prepared to take? Again, we need to, we need to consider all of these things and it's difficult. And sometimes it is difficult to obey things that we find difficult. You know, it's difficult to obey even not just in this thing, but when God comes to us and God speaks to us, we can sometimes find that what God is asking for is really difficult because we don't want to do it. We don't feel that we should do it. And that kind of leads us on to the second point, the, the sort of the end, which is for no. You know, sometimes, excuse me. You know, they say that sorry is the hardest word, but sometimes no is the hardest word. And if you've got children and you've got to say no to them, can I get this? Can I get that? No. Oh, but can I just, if I, oh, everybody else has got this, can I just be allowed to go here? Am I allowed to go there? Am I allowed to do this? And it's very hard to say no. And they're disappointed and they're, and they're frustrated and they want, they want things. But it's not just children who are disappointed by that. We're all disappointed at times when there's something that we want to do and we're told no. We can't do it. No, we're not allowed to do it. And the same is, and we see that that can be can be a very difficult thing. And even as, as God's people, sometimes we have to accept that God's answer is no. That God's answer to the thing that we want, to the thing that we're praying for, is no. And it can be it can be hard. You know, it can be it can be difficult. We can be left with the question, why? But this would be for the glory of God. But this would have been a, a great thing for God. But we've got to accept that God has a has a plan that we're not always privy to. And sometimes we just have to accept God's verdict in the matter. We've just got to accept that this is what God has, has for us to do. Perhaps there's something we want to do for God and we think this would be bringing glory. And the Lord comes to us and says, it's not for you. We see that when David wanted to build the temple, you know, David had a, had a, had a heart for God, a heart to build this. But God said, this is not for you, David. It will be built but not by you. And sometimes that can be hard to accept when we have a plan and we've got a desire that, that we really want to do and we see that we need to be willing. And those who are these type of Christians who are faithful to God are the ones who will say, okay, God, I'll accept this. Just like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they, they, they were prepared to accept whatever God would say. If God would deliver them from the furnace, that would be great. But if God wouldn't, then they would die, but they knew that they would be faithful. And God looks for that. God looks for a people who are who are willing, who are willing for whatever God asks. 
and if God says no, then they'll accept the no. And you know, we see that's so important. And it's so important as well, as I say, that, that we are prepared in our lives also to say no. Because as I say, while we, we are commanded by God to obey those who have the rule over us, that's only up to a point. Because if we find ourselves in a situation where we have been, at, where we're asked to deny the Lord, or we're asked to, to stop preaching the gospel, then it's in, that brings us into an Acts chapter 5 situation where we must then rather obey God than man. And that's the, the case where we would be, God would command us to follow what God has commanded and say no to, to those who are in authority over us. And we see in the day that we live in, the day of political correctness, you know, we live in a world that is moving all of the time and has been for a long, long time now away from the word of God and the things of God. You know, we find ourselves having to say, no, we don't accept that. No, we won't accept that. This is God's word and God's word hasn't changed. And we see that there will be times we've, we've faced it. You may face it in different circumstances where you have to say, no, do you know what? I don't accept that because God's word says this. And it can be hard. I know it can be hard for some of those, for the younger ones who are still in school. There can be things that come up about evolution, about LGBT, all of these types of things. And it's very hard. But I just thank God for those who, who have been faithful to say, no, listen, I don't, I don't agree with that. And as, I, as I, I was listening to a preacher this morning, and he was talking about how we can disagree without being disagreeable. How we can say, listen, it's not because we hate things or because we've, you know, we don't come with a hateful attitude, but we can still disagree. We can still hold to, to God's word. We can still hold to say, listen, God's, this is what God, this is God's word, and this is God's verdict in the matter, and that's what we will be we'll be holding to. And we see that we we will find ourselves more and more in those days. You know, we see all this talk of hate speech and you know, talk that preaching the gospel could be well, not quite yet, but could be considered hateful because we, we live in a world where people are ashamed of nothing but offended by everything. It's in every every walk of life, not just for the Christian, but in everything. People that are not ashamed of the life they live, the things they do, but offended by just about everything. And we see that that pushes through all this. It, this is hateful. This is, un, this is unfair to me. And we see that the word of God is certainly very clear on, on, on many matters that the world today just doesn't accept. And we see that we've got a responsibility to hold to God's word and to God's truth in these things. And that brings us to the final, the final, the final point, ease for endurance. And as we see in, in Mark chapter 13, that those who endure to the end will be saved. Those who are prepared to go through all of the trials and the difficulties, the, the persecution, um, the imprisonment, the betrayals, but still faithful to God, not to deny the Lord, but to continue to preach the Lord. Those are the ones who God will give the reward to. And brothers and sisters, let us, let us be found to be these stones, these saints who are faithful to God, that through the good times and the bad times, through the, the, ex, the, the great experiences and the, diff the difficult experiences, are still found praising God, still thanking God. Like Paul in prison, still singing in the prison, singing in the church when you're allowed, and singing in the prison. And we see that's what God looks for, a people who are faithful, a people who will go on, a people who he can count upon, that will be here worshipping God today. And if God spares us in 10 years' time, we'll still be worshipping God and still be holding to the word of God, still faithful to God's word. That's what God, that's what God looks for. Not those who are caught up by, oh, here's, a, here's Christ here, and here's this here, and this is, let's go and do this. God needs a people who are faithful, who are excited by the word of God, excited by the things of God, but are people who are faithful to the word of God and who, when things are difficult, will still hold on. We'll still trust them and still praise them. Amen.